So, good afternoon. I, uh, dobry, dobre poledne. Um, maybe I will switch immediately into English since we have a very international uh, audience uh, and international guests today. Um, I'm very happy to uh, uh, introduce you to our discussion that is a part of um, Cena Viera Jerosova Award Collateral Program, uh, as well as it's a part of our uh, uh, launching new space program, which uh, started yesterday with uh, Mark Ter uh, um, being a host uh, in INI this, uh, this whole weekend, and uh, it will uh, also uh, will be followed by uh, screenings today and screenings tomorrow. Uh, I hope so. And um, getting uh, to the point, we have uh, honored to invite several um, uh, uh, chief uh, editors and editors from um, uh, four different uh, art magazines. Uh, the reason for that was that they um, they decided to start to run this. Uh, platform called uh, East Art Max, um, and I'm, I wanted to uh, uh, get to know better the whole idea of the platform and uh, um, how, what was the, yeah, what was the reason and what should be the outcome that uh, would come from 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 the this whole situation here. So let me introduce you to our guest. Uh, um, firstly. Um, Kristina Bogdan, who uh, is an editor of uh, Revista Arta, based in Bucharest. She also runs this uh, place called ODD. Uh, she's a PhD candidate at uh, University uh, Paris 1 Sorbonne. And, um, and that's, uh, that's it. Uh, we're very happy to have you, Kristina. Uh, then there's Karolina from Schum, from Polish uh, magazine, uh, from, from Warsaw. Um, uh, we know each other with Karolina for pretty long time. She uh, uh, was running her own blog, then she became a vice uh, editor of uh, Schum, and she studied at uh, Uni Jagiellonian University, and now you're also teaching and studying uh, as a PhD candidate at Artes Liberales in Warsaw, if yes. I'm uh, not mistaken. Uh, then uh, Klara Polouszkowa from Art Talk. Uh, she's uh, yeah, she's the chief editor of uh, Art Talk. Uh, I hope I'm not making any mistake. You are chief editor, right? Okay. Uh, she studied at uh, Umprum, her master's, uh, and she uh, won uh, our precious uh, Vera Irosova Award in the year 2015, uh, two years ago already. Uh, and then last uh, but not least, mm, uh, uh, Gergely Notch from uh, Art Portal. Uh, Budapest, uh, which actually is the initiator, uh, I think, of, uh, uh, of the platform. Uh, definitely, uh, uh, they are responsible for managing it, uh, for like speaking of formalities and so on, but maybe uh, let's talk about it later on. Uh, Gergely uh, used to be an editor of uh, not only Focus on Art, but more like uh, magazines that had more like uh, a cultural uh, scope. Uh, HVG and the Muerte, that was uh, it. Um, and now he's chief editor of Art Portal. Uh, let's, uh, uh, let's get down to it. Uh, I maybe just shortly will introduce this, this platform because uh, um, East Art Max was an idea to exchange critics and each of the critics were coming uh, either to Prague, to Bucharest, to Budapest or uh, uh, to Warsaw. Or also there's uh, Bratislava there as a part of uh, Art Talk, uh, Slovakian Art Talk. Uh, and it's uh, those short uh, residency periods were supposed to be followed by articles written about each of the scene. So um, if you look up uh, East Art Max website, uh, Facebook website, you will see a lot of um, uh, articles translated into uh, English. And uh, I was uh, wondering who came, like to ask you specifically, who came with this initiative, who was the, the one who was responsible for setting it uh, up, and maybe we can start from this. Um, maybe I will uh, ask you, Gergely, since uh, you're supposed to be the uh, one who, uh, the beneficent of the grant, if I, uh, yeah, I thank, say. Thank you for the introduction, and thanks, thanks for coming, and thanks for having us, first of all. I think uh, there was, wasn't one single person or one single uh, magazine 
which uh, who or which came up with the idea of, of uh, making a common platform. I think there were different motivations and different ideas and the different scenes. Um, the name itself came from Christina East Art Max, which is a which is a really good name and summarizes it somehow summarizes somehow the whole kind of um, project that we are doing. We are Eastern and we are magazines and we are dealing with art for sure. Um, what I can talk about uh, really briefly, just answering your question, is our motivation. Um, I'm coming from the journalism field. Actually, I was working for, I used to work for uh, magazines dealing with politics and an economy and culture, this kind of stuff. So I'm coming from the journalism, and I realized that on the art field and the visual art field, there, there, there are no residencies, no exchange programs for, for journalists and art critics. You can find residency programs for creators, for um, art, visual artists, but, but nothing for journalists. Uh, while I think for journalists, it's also essential to, to make connections, to, 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 to establish a network and to try, try to um, get familiar with other scenes than, than the home scene. So that was the first idea and uh, the se there were different kind of impressions. The second was that um, I don't know how is it here and how is it in Poland, uh, you're going to uh, tell, uh, tell it a little bit later probably. But um, in Hungary in the recent years, we started to feel ourselves more and more isolated uh, because of the political situation and because of the, the state control over the media. And we had a basic kind of need, like, like back in the 80s, back, back in the old times, when you, want, when you were hungry for the information coming from other countries. And we realized that we don't know too much about uh, the countries that are close to us our neighbors, so, so we had, uh, we just wanted to read some um, relevant and original material coming from these places. That was my motivation number two. Motivation number three was, um, at least for us, that we felt that there is a growing interest um, throughout Europe um, towards this region. Um, I have the luck to, to contribute to Off Biennial Budapest, which is a big independent um, art bi biennial. And at the first edition in 2015, um, I saw um, TV uh, crews, camera crews, uh, coming to Budapest from different places, from like Berlin, from, from London, and they didn't know where to go, they didn't know who to, who to contact with. So I thought that these people just want to see things, they want to talk to, to other people, they need information. And I was like, um, why don't we provide information? So that was kind of a basic, uh, experience that there's a growing interest toward, towards the contemporary art field in Budapest, um, probably because of the political situation, um, and there, there are no, there's no relevant information, or at least very limited. So these were the basic motivations for us to try to establish connections with others and try to find out an exchange program in which we can hosting and sending people and writing and translating and publishing stuff in our languages and in English. And uh, some of you already like benefited from the program. You had the chance to, to go and actually um, stay in some of the countries for two weeks. I know that Karolina now is in, in uh, Bratislava. I don't know. In Bucharest. In Bucharest. Okay, so, oh, so there were like multiple <laughs> options to she was, attend. Yeah, she got extra. <laughs> and Bonus. Christina, did you also uh, have I, a chance I was in to, Budapest, to travel? Actually, so. And I think that was a good moment. We all, all of us met for the final kind of feedback um, meeting, meeting yeah, um, in Budapest just a month ago. And it was during Off Biennial, and I think it was a good moment to kind of test uh, the, the interest of, um, um, of bringing a lot of, um, of art critics and journalists in the same place to follow a specific, um, a specific event and I think of precisely needed um, as much attention um, as they could get and especially for people in the region because um, it's this kind of event where um, some people are trying to figure out what to do in a, in a really bad situation, which is quite a lose-lose situation, whatever they do. So whenever, <laughs> it's funny, but it's true. Um, so I think uh, there is a real point in, in, in making this uh, quite well known and 
um, getting involved. So I think it was also a kind of a side effect of our project that we could mm -hmm. perhaps contribute to that. And Clara, did you also have a chance to uh, travel? Or you no, I didn't go for residency uh, myself. But um, so I only went and I only experienced this situation of uh, this common meeting uh, in Budapest right now in, in, in October. And um, there I kind of had a really good feeling about it. Mm, you know, I was, I was never like so much into the residencies because like I was myself a coordinator of the residency program before. And um, I always or often I felt like this frustration of not really feeling some sort of connection between the people or a meaningful connection that could last longer or which could bring something. And um, so I was really curious about what happens even in these like short periods of time that people can spend at some places. And uh, in Budapest also, because there were some other people who went to, to residencies to other cities and somehow we just all met in, in Budapest in October and I had the feeling that things continue kind of on their own and uh, I felt that there is some sort of connection and that people are kind of more that they made these connections to also different editorial boards of the different magazines and now they kind of cooperate with them or with each other like uh, with us without us really taking care of it and that was something I felt um, was for me a, uh, an important information an important kind of feeling that it works somehow, even though uh, for us it was some sort of a pilot project, you know, we didn't really know like what's going to happen and if two weeks uh, even makes sense to go for, for residency for, you know, because it's a very short time. So it was a test and on some levels I think it really could work and um, so even though I wasn't uh, myself on a residency, I more, I'm more and more convinced that uh, it's meaningful. And concerning numbers, may I ask you like how many people uh, were taking part in the program from each of the countries? Well, I was just want to uh, know the scale of it. Like. Because we had uh, two pro... I mean, there were like two sources of funding. Everything kind of boils down to that. So there's this Visegrad and then there's like a Romanian funding. So like in Romania, we got a lot of residents, maybe eight of yes. them or something we have like three that. Romanians, yes. And we yeah, sent we a lot of them. So maybe like <laughs> yeah. 14 or something. And then the other, the Visegrad was again, I don't know, maybe 10 at least, 10 people? Yeah, two, um, two residents from, from every um, magazine. Sent, were sent to, to different cities, but there was no exchange between Bratislava and Prague. And there was, there was also a, a difference um, in the Romanian side of the program because we Hungarians, we wanted to send people to, to Cluj also, not just Bucharest, because there are traditionally there are lots of connections with Cluj. But so the two legs, actually, sorry. Actually, everyone traveled a bit yeah, to other everyone. cities. So to yeah. Cluj, a lot of people did. Yeah, a lot of people visited Cluj also. So the two legs of the project, the Romanian side and the Visegrad side, was a little bit different. Um, altogether, like 20 people were involved. 20 Which, people, that's almost, yeah. And who came up, if I might ask, because uh, yeah, we're getting to this point that we know more or less that uh, the structure of the project sort of repeats the structure of uh, Visegrad for, um, for countries that's supposed to be united in this uh, semi-political al alliance and then Romanians all of a sudden. So who came up with the, with the idea to also include Romanians or who or maybe you uh, invited the, yourself? I think it was a coincidence <laughs> because I, I think it was a I coincidence. I was in. I just don't remember. <laughs> because like and I don't think that we want to limit the, the cooperation to the Visegrad region and it was never the like the dominant came, idea because it was yeah, because like over the with the with the uh, Vera Yerosova award, I had the chance to go to Bucharest, and already at that time, we were somehow setting up stuff with uh, with Gerge and with Carolina, and we were thinking what to do together. And I talked to, about it with Christina, and she was interested in it. And before that, she also did something similar with uh, Berlin Art Link in in Germany, some exchange of some sort. So. It just, yeah, just somehow fit actually, actually, I, I, uh, I get the name of Carolina and Clara from Transit. 
you know, this organization that is operating in, in, in these countries. Uh, because we were looking for connections, but we didn't know which direction we should, we should um, start to, to go. And by accident, I just, I just got the name of magazine Shum and our talk. And because, because Karina I, and Clara. I approached Transit yeah, at course. first yeah. and, and they were kind of in the middle of rethinking what they want to do and they weren't really ready to this kind of cooperation and they they actually also gave me like uh, your name and so yeah, it nice was Well, yeah, that was a question for us. That was a question for us whether we can find the relevant partners. Uh, and we re and I, I had to realize that I don't even know the names. I don't even know the, rel uh, the relevant names in the certain, certain scenes. So I, st I started to, to ask uh, people. First of all, Barnabas Benchik, who is um, loosely connected to Art Portal and uh, also helping a lot in the co coordination of, um, of East Art Max. He was the for former director of Ludwig, Ludwig Museum in Budapest and also a curator and involved in lots of different stuff. Uh, he, he knew many names, but somehow we started, um, had, to, had to start to, to, to make a research whether these names are serious, are they relevant in their own respective scenes. And, and it was complicated because all of the magazines are in their native languages. I yeah. mean, it's very, except the, well, actually, except the Romanian magazine, yeah. which is bilingual. <laughs> but everyone, so for me, it was quite difficult to Google Translate or read everything with the, uh, so it had to be, actually, it was important that, what, last year we met in Prague uh, before the kickoff, like about this time. And so it was more like a, the, knowing the people meant you, we could trust them and their work. So it was, I guess, an important thing to meet face to face before we start. Yes, yeah, so it's hard to start any project if you don't know the yeah. people. It's like, even you change the emails, but think mm -hmm. who they are exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> sorry, may, may I ask something? From, yeah. uh, sorry, for, sorry for taking the no. um, opportunity from, that, from you, but what, what was the motivation for you guys? I don't know too much about it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, in Poly Poland, it's not so obvious, you know. Uh, it's funny. It was funny to hear you about this, let's say, this description about situation in Hungary. In Poland, we also have sort of this kind of situation uh, that uh, the government changed, so there's a conservative turn uh, now in Poland. But it appears that uh, because of this change, we become more and more inter interested in ourselves. So. Now in Poland you have some huge shows about Polishness in different perspective and I be become more and more <laughs> tired because of, of this whole, let's say, uh, topics only um, about Poland and what is happening in Poland. Everybody is talking that we should learn from Hungary, but there is no reflection that in Hungary you really think in other way, that you want to be more international and more connected to, to other countries. And in Poland, it's like, uh, okay, so we have to focus what is happening now in Poland, make critical exhibitions. Of course, uh, it's like more uh, pressure from the curators than from the artists, because artists are still like more uh, thinking about, um, let's say, their global career. Or they are just watching Instagram and uh, watch <laughs> what the uh, colleagues from other countries are making. So uh, to make uh, and s introduce some more international topics in Shum, it was also not so obvious. Uh, we have strong discussions, but for me it was like certain that we should do this because uh, focusing on Poland is too boring. And even if Poland is one of the biggest countries in the Central Europe and we have so many institutions, it's still to less to be only in this uh, small part of Europe uh, or place. Um, so you are ma we are making this topic in different ways. For example, we ra write about some things in our magazine, of course it's in Polish, but it's about uh, another scenes. <laughs> uh, 
but this um, participating in this project for me was a huge op possibility to bring other people to Warsaw uh, and um, to bring out the articles that are in English about Warsaw, but also what is happening in other uh, countries. So it was really interesting, even um, if the, um, let's say, working with authors that are out outside uh, and don't speak in Polish, it's like harder thing. It's like yeah. <laughs> editing this text <laughs> is like, whoa. I, uh, I wanted to ask you also one thing, because the, uh, specifically you, Karolina, because I, I, I believe that uh, when you set up a project that uh, concern um, countries from Central Europe, there will be always a lot of enthusiasm going on. So even if you, yeah, there are some difficulties such as we don't know each other and we need to really like break uh, uh, the ice and, and get to know each other better, there will be always this uh, kind of ghost of uh, Middle Europe or uh, third, uh, Eastern Central European uh, identity thing going on. And then I think the, uh, the next step would be course in the terms of this program that the authors are going to each of the countries and they're writing articles but my question is like how critical you can be about uh, the countries uh, that uh, they're kind of like hosting you and I was really amazed to, to, to uh, uh, um, find out that you can be really critical because I read your text about Romania <laughs> and it was like wow it was pretty pretty nasty like compa a lot of comparison going on between Poland and Romania, which I think it's fairly good because we are more or less on the same uh, uh, level in terms of uh, like, um, development uh, culturally. I think there are a lot of things in, in common between, even though they're really spread, I think there are. We are it's easy to understand uh, the art scene from the Central Europe because there are similarities, a lot of them, and the same problems. when. Yesterday I was uh, talking with uh, Michal Novotny and he was complaining that there is no institutions huge in uh, Prague for contemporary art. Uh, and we are discussing about, uh, let's say, directors having power. And um, so it's the, like the same in whole Europe. Uh, maybe not whole Europe, but the central, you know. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of similar, some, similar to some, let's say, institutions in Prague and in Bucharest, MNAC, and this uh, uh, great director of MNAC. <laughs> so if you read, for example, Piotr Piotrowski book, I think you have some ideas in mind about <laughs> what is happening here. You like. Yeah, but then I, I was uh, just shocked by this like courageous gesture that you were able actually to be critical toward uh, people who hosted you for uh, for like uh, two weeks and they were probably very nice to you and then you write uh, <laughs> things that you f that you think about them that the uh, museum is obsolete you cannot get like there it's not there's no connection with the scene uh, the directors you know, the same, everybody is nice for me and what what you what you should do as an art critic be nice for everybody because they are not no no good, <laughs> no <laughs> but you know what i think is that um Maybe um, always, it's always it's risky, you know, to make critical statements about some stuff that you really don't know properly. But maybe even from making a mistake and ma making a misjudgment, you know, or disinterpretation of things, it can still um, lead to some discussion and opening some topics that people don't talk about because it's just done like this, you know, or this is, you know, to break the, the status quo somehow, I don't know. You know, but maybe even like by mistake, you can it can lead somewhere. But actually, it was uh, one of the motivations for my uh, participation. Like I was hoping to get, uh, yeah, real critics to to kind of look on the on the Romanian scene, which is also super self-absorbed and super provincial in that way. I mean, it's um, it's got some really high peaks that are super exciting, uh, but then as a as a as a scene. Um, it's uh, unable to take criticism. Every attempt that I did in the magazine to r do really critical stuff, especially when I moved back to Romania and I was a bit of a foreigner, so I could afford to have this position that Carolina had, so I could 
write, uh, you know, really critical stuff, but always people reacted in a super emotional way, um, which was super boring in the end. Like, they didn't understand the point of that. Um, so, for me, the motivation of getting other critics, especially, like, young people who could deal on a kind of one-to-one -one, uh, level to with the artist and um, all the institutions, which are super young, or, I mean, there's no in proper institution, just, like, mostly off spaces. So um, that, that was exactly the point that I was hoping people would make this kind of really um, hardcore um, e evaluation of the scene. Um, and, but after doing some research, so I was pleased that you know, I could see Karolina and Piotr, the other Polish guy, they were the most critical. So, um, but I was happy that they did see a lot of stuff. I mean, they didn't write it, you know, just by walking uh, down the street. They organized a lot of studio visits and a lot of, you know, uh, visits to everyone that was anyone in the, on the scene. So it wasn't a, a, a f you know, a fake criticism or something just done to, to write uh, crap about the scene. So, and actually, everyone hated it, most of the people. Uh, but there were <laughs> people who really liked it. Piotr's text about Romanian painting was really hurting. Uh, because uh, there was, <laughs> uh, yes, there's this famous uh, Cluj school of painting, which is again, um, it's some sort of um, a thing we take pride in. Um, but um, a lot of people are just, um, for a lot of people it's obvious that um, it's uh, selling the Eastern dream to the West somehow. Um, Oh, Which is, uh, even now uh, in Narodny Gallery there is this uh, a start point show and there is one guy from uh, Cluj and of course this painting. Like, oh, <laughs> painting, like resting but in it, the mood. But it was a, some, some sort of taboo uh, subject. You couldn't say that this, I mean, it was the only really quality thing that, uh, that you could identify with Romania. So saying that um, there is more to it than, you know, just this beautiful... Um, a historical, grandiose painting was, uh, you know, uh, w was very wrong to say. So I was pleased that someone, especially someone so young, and I think this was uh, one of the interesting points of the of the whole program that people who are mostly in their twenties uh, participated, mm -hmm. uh, with some exceptions, but. Um, it was um, people who had a f fresh eye and who were, um, you know, willing to um, to engage in conversation and people who I think will also get um, possibilities, t uh, like working collaboration possibilities from there on. So some of them are also curators or um, some of them, some of them even like Shimon was an artist or yeah. so some of them were, are actually artists but with an important writing uh, practice, so um, it, a second interest, I guess, uh, of the whole project was to create this kind of connections, like something else comes out of it, not, not just texts, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Collaborations. Just one thing, uh, I, I, wanted, I wanted to add to this criticism and being critical question. I don't know how is it in your um, scenes and in your countries, but in Hungary there's this interesting situation um, it's not easy to be critical towards your scene in a politi politically uh, split situation. You find yourself, as, a, as an art critic, you find yourself in a position where, where you don't want to say you know, bad things or critical um, sentences about your people, about your group, uh, because you don't want to strength, strengthen the, 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 um, the other side. This is really unhealthy and this is really bad because you cannot, cannot have an, ob an objective kind of position to take a look at your own scene. So it was good to, to, to let others to come in and take a look on ourselves and, uh, and, and saying things. So it was kind of a mirror situation for, for ourselves also. Uh, for me, uh, being in Budapest and l living in, under the, these circumstances that we have just now, on a marginalized uh, contemporary art scene, it's just not easy to be critical towards the towards my people because you know we we are on on, on the same side. I'm saying, am I saying you'd be the right person to uh, uh, talk about the Czech scene because uh, Czech is not my mother language, so when I read things like art talk, I'm reading it through as a second language. But I sometimes find in the Czech Republic, and I can't speak for your respective countries that um, uh, people who write for uh, about uh, exhibitions or something 
get confused with uh, being critical and criticism. And I often find it can be quite personal. And so people say, well, that was a bullshit exhibition, it was totally commercial, or that this uh, institution, I don't know what the fuck it's doing, or something that's really you know, very personal, but not going into this situation. It's not talking about why. You know, so we're not talking about the content. What's the problem here? Why aren't our institutions? It's not a personal thing. I don't think you can personally you can personally say blame the current management of the institutions, but it's not the current management that brought the institutions to where they are today in this problematic situation. It's 20, 25 years, why is it, you know, where, where has this been going? How have we all together been working and aren't we we're part of the problem in some ways? Or, um, and I think, so sometimes it's really um, disheartening or boring to read some of these critiques from me. You know, I just can't, like it starts off with a rant and then I just turn off. And I just think there's nothing I'm gonna learn from this because it's just somebody kind of going from their own personal, it just becomes too personal. And I think that there's, you know, I'm not, I'm not, like, I'm not realizing why they don't like it. It's just they don't like it because it doesn't, you know, there's nothing so sort of meaningful there. And I, I think it's part of the problem also, since we're talking about it, it's not, it has nothing to do necessarily with the people who write for it or, or the uh, journals who they're writing for. But it comes back to the problem with this system is that there's uh, been very few platforms for um, uh, critics in the Czech Republic to write for it and get experience and also to be, say, mentored by. So I think what you're doing is really great because you're addressing that situation by like, getting together and writing these residencies and providing <coughs> opportunities for people. But I found that that's sort of slightly frustrating is that there's just, you know, I don't think in the Czech Republic you could work uh, just as an uh, um, uh, uh, art journalist or yeah, critic. The same effort. Yeah. And so, so, you know, this is a problem. It's not a problem. It's not that it's blame any of the, the publications. But again, it's like something that obviously does need to be talked about. But I find in the Czech Republic, I said there's, sometimes I just get turned off by some of the things that I just, you know, I, I read the first sentence. Yeah. No, but I, I just like I, I I know what you mean, and I I this is one of the things that I realized like more and more during developing this kind of cooperation that even for us in the as editors we are always like one two people you know sitting there with the computers trying to to do it. So with this like cooperation, you get a broader or a bigger group of people who can exchange also our, it's not only about the critics, but also uh, about us as editors and exchanging our experience and uh, experience about how we could do it and how people write and what people write about. And um, so, so maybe for me, it's also some sort of like extended kind of editorial board in some way that you can exchange uh, ideas exactly about what you're talking about, about uh, the approach in writing. And um, yeah, and it was also one of, for me, maybe an ongoing kind of motivation more and more with the project, like why to do it. Uh, that with this exactly as you get this like broader group of people working together on something um, you can also get more people involved and maybe uh, initiate uh, to some people that they could write or you bring some people from from other countries uh, to your magazines because you have so many or so few people and so few voices uh, I think the, the fresh eye it's, a, it's a, what said what Christina mentioned before that you ha you get a fresh eye, eye that is coming from someone else someone who is uh, who can have uh, a different opinion on the scene and is not somehow involved in the in the scenes to but be uh, think, hypercritical um, but I wanted this, to uh, um, but just to address your question because I think it, she kind of had this historical um, perspective on it as in there's been you know, ever since um, the, the end of the previous uh, regimes in these countries, I think there's like a, a clear, um, you know, dropout in, in criticism. Like it's, uh, you, can, you can see it. I mean, before the critic had a specific, very specific function. Our magazine, for example, has been going on since 1954. And there were critics working there like on a, on a it's like a job. It was a job and their, their, their job was, um, you know, to put the words on top of some works uh, that had a specific um, um, relationship to power. So uh, the figure of the critic was uh, completely, um, I mean, it was powerful in a way, but it was um, also 
quite horrible. Um, yes, so also it looks in Poland that like you criticize somebody uh, during the communism, it's a really strong gesture. But uh, I it's think in uh, in most of I mean at least in the magazine in this magazine in Revistarta the the critic um, I mean it, he could be um, so he or she could it be was a mediator. A rash, or, but, magazine. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much. So I mean there was no, there is no um, how shall I say no con no continuity with the with the figure of the critic that is actually interesting. So for us it's really now we're kind of okay waking up and realizing there's a big. Uh, there's a big gap, so there's not. Uh, sometimes the scenes are not powerful and they're provincial, precisely because there is no figures, no, no critical figures. So people who can uh, dialogue with the artist in a in in a way that is relevant. So you know, well, I think uh, this kind of came together because all of us were interested in in um, re. Re recreate or creating actually this figure of the of the critic. So I think it's okay. It's just starting. So maybe in a few years we'll get some uh, some results. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not to say that now we wrote already g genius texts or we are we know how to deal with things. But um, I think kind of this uh, working in, as a group definitely helps to tackle the problems in a. In a more intelligent way. Um, in the rest of you also feel that this personal in involvement is maybe one of the biggest problems because you mentioned them a lot. Like, I, I think. Uh, yeah, I think. I think in. Sorry. This is just just a sentence. That, uh, in general, the the position of the critic, the art critic, is also under certain revision these days or questioned these days because. Uh, mo I don't know how is it in your countries, but in Hungary the critics mostly curators at the same time, and probably the the work of selection, making the canon, it, it's done by curators and not by critics. So so the the role of the curators are much stronger these days than the art critics. But I think that I believe that I uh, that art uh, criticism and the role of art criticism and the role of art journalism must be strength strengthened in a way because because it's important it's it's a, it's a healthy structure when you have curators and you have art critics also and at the same time they are mediators like s some of you had just said um, towards the public towards the the other fields of the media so i think it's an important role but it's uh, at least in at least in Hungary, it's 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 questioned these days. But I think everywhere. I don't know any uh, country that the critics can uh, be uh, uh, um, like employed uh, on a daily basis as uh, as an art critics. Where is this country where you have curators doing their job, critics doing their job? Is it some kind of like it's like a land that has not been discovered, but we all believe that it has. It's somewhere there. Is it is it in Poland? Maybe maybe Poland is a promised land. I would not be surprised. Okay, so my, uh, <laughs> Maybe it's not an only job because I'm also a freelancer critic writing texts for, for some other reasons than the shum, but mostly I'm living from writing. Yes, so yes, but like, you're of also course it's like a, um, vice uh, uh, chief really editor. Really precarious situation, but. Um, so there are a number of uh, critics, very small number, who are running the, 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 the mediums they're participating in. So. They are employed. They have to be employed by it. But uh, no, I guess this is like also the five people. Yeah, and I bet that no nowhere else there will be more. Even in the so-called West, if we go there, I think the the position of art critic is also very precarious, as as uh, as in here. It's more tied to capital, I guess. There, I mean, we don't really have that pressure in Eastern Europe uh, so far. I think like we're not, um, you know, our. Uh, magazines aren't, uh, they're mostly run from public funding or, you know, some private sponsorship, but we don't, we're, we're not, um, we don't get commissions by, I don't know what, gallery to write a nice text about their show, so we don't actually have that issue. But just, uh, I don't think there's such a big problem with uh, us doing more things than just writing. I, I think now it's, a, it's, it's how it is. We don't, we can't go back to just being, um, you know, this uh, 18th century art critics. Uh, so it's fine that, and I think it's a, it's a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And it can have, I mean, as long as you're honest about where you're speaking from, you can be an artist, a curator, a teacher, there, you, have, you have to be. 
No, I, I think that in Poland we have more like be, maybe strict rules because, for example, in Shum we don't um, collaborate with uh, uh, people who are working in the galleries, especially commercial ones, but also not like public ones. If you are a curator uh, working uh, as a day job in the cur some institution, you cannot write a review from the other institution or other galleries, a like strange uh, situation. So we try to collaborate with people that are, don't have these jobs, like I am a curator in the Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw. Of course, sometimes they are writing uh, for us some essays, but are uh, on some topic, not mm -hmm. um, not the, uh, yeah, because not it's not sooner or later it might create the, the, the conflict of the, of the interest, right? Uh, so far I had a feeling that we've been quite enthusiastic talking about the, the possibilities, the benefits and so on, but I would like to maybe bring uh, the um, example of, of a recent or maybe still ongoing of Biennial and uh, um, get down to, uh, to the topic of, of threats, especially the uh, politi political uh, threads that are coming with uh, with the uh, new uh, white, why not white, but right uh, turn uh, in uh, in Central Europe, and that somehow uh, uh, might put in jeopardy the, the uh, freedom of uh, speech and, and creation. And I think already Gergely mentioned that that uh, it's already working as a like auto censorship that you're not able to criticize. Uh, someone who is against so-called regime or against the official uh, 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 current power, uh, and I was wondering, uh, like, how um, how your program is uh, also uh, reflecting on it, or whether uh, you're trying to uh, build the structure, the structure uh, to be uh, uh, self-sufficient uh, and sustainable, and to have uh, uh, this kind of a, like a hub, uh, like a shelter for. Uh, for uh, where you can yeah, still uh, uh, prevent the freedom of speech and, and creation. I don't think we're there yet. <sighs> not, not there. No, you're not. Uh... I don't think we're. I don't think we got to that uh, point where we're actually. I mean, it was really. It should be said that it was like a test. So we don't. Uh, um, we got what uh, you know what funding was available, and then we were really interested in uh, in making connections, but. Um, I think this um, resistance position that you're suggesting we can attempt to build uh, would happen somehow naturally through the through these contacts. Um, but um, as I mean, this is why somehow the Budapest example was quite striking. Uh, that the moment when you decide to boycott public funding, which we are all living on, so it has to be said, uh, then uh, things become very, very difficult. Um, and I think uh, there's a, um, th there is no thing that we thought, and we haven't thought of anything uh, as an alternative so far. And uh, one of the issues in, in, in Central and Eastern Europe is that we have been running, uh, all of the arts have been running on public funding ever, ever since we've known them. So we don't have private sponsorship, uh, we, don't have a, we don't really have collectors, there's many, uh, there's a whole infrastructure missing. I think somehow it's good it, I mean, there is a benefit to that, uh, but um, the, um, what I think would be really good is for this um, somehow collective uh, ethos to, to kind of happen, uh, to, to manifest itself uh, more. So there has to be um, stuff coming out or solutions coming out of, uh, of working uh, together. So. There is, I don't think we should be looking for a market or we should be looking for, for private solutions, um, but, uh, you know, um, try, and, uh, tr try and kind of bypass all of the previous stuff. I mean, uh, not going into the, into the, you know, breaking points where the, where, where the Western uh, model has, uh, has ended. So I think there's, everything is breaking up in Western Europe, so we don't have to go in that way. But there are many other models, like, I don't know, 
I'm thinking now Southeast Asia because we know a bit that scene or in South America there's very different uh, ways of doing things and we should be learning from other regions um, that are that are now struggling with the um, you know what do we what do we bring new I mean you know we're we're not we don't have to copy paste everything from uh, from Western Europe, there is so many interesting things that we could do precisely because of our idiosyncratic situation. Um, so I think uh, this is the point where we can ask ourselves these, these questions. So, Yes, we are in the point we couldn't say anymore that we are 25, 20, 25, I don't know, years after some break point. And we are still in the beginning, we are still learning, we are still in some um, yeah, beginning of something. I think what you mentioned was quite important that we should have um, tried <laughs> to build really professional structure, which would be really on the on some level that you can really trust that it will, this will be the professional in some way. But we also told us that it's like uh, uh, difficult to create this kind of situation when you don't have money to run the magazine or you buy your auto auto or less or some small amount. You can uh, you cannot earn uh, or maybe employ them and you cannot tell them, okay, you are my uh, author. Let's write only for uh, art and antiques or. Yeah, and that's sure. exactly the second that part of my, answer, of my question answer and connection uh, is that we should really try to re uh, enact or re uh, rebuild the structure of a market which wouldn't be like our enemy. We could really profit from it as it will be like a structure and that's the money which could come from. Like, I mean, no, so uh, in show we are living from advertisements. Uh, our let's say our uh, um, income from uh, ministry was really small, and probably we will not apply this this next year because it's without sense. They are giving money for conservative magazines. But uh, my experience, like with running the magazine that uh, is taking money from the advertisement advertisements, it's like, it's really a lot of conflicts with interests and uh, if you make some critical statement about something, you will not get this advertisement. So you have like, uh, be a player, um, <laughs> you have to be not stupid, but also think uh, what you are really doing and maybe have this perspective that if it's um, even, okay, so make some critical uh, text, but who is this guy and what he's doing for the um, cities, uh, society, um, if it's really good or bad, you have to think it about it more. It's worth to criticize uh, somebody or, uh, of course, and the, this is different situation when you have young critic that can, can uh, make some more critical gestures or have this fresh uh, view. But when you become older, I, st I am starting to become older, so it's like, you, uh, you know everything more and um, see that everything is more complicated than it was when you have like uh, 20 years old. It's like, whoa! <laughs> Yeah, like, Anushka, how would you imagine this uh, like uh, re-establishing? Because you, you mentioned that yeah, there should be connection without um, like between market and uh, um, and cr uh, art critic, which is. Uh, uh, it could be very interesting romance, but uh, then like uh, you have to ignite uh, uh, the the art market at least in Central Europe. You have to kind of like trigger it off because it's it's not as big to be uh, uh, potent enough. At least this is like I might say from uh, from a, a brief observation that it's not as potent to uh, yeah. And then again, to do what to support art criticism. Uh, to I think the uh, and in Carolina case it's also you know you 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 mentioned that you're not applying for uh, money from the ministry but at the end of the day who is paying for advert advertisement most, of uh, of so, all uh, of the institutions most in Poland of our, also of our advertisements are like public institutions mm -hmm. uh, 
commercial ones are not so very interested because they want to publish maybe advertisement in some English magazine, uh, phrase for example, or something like that. Um, so uh, we are just looking what is happening on, on all around the scene and uh, if the, everything will collapse, so we will also end our <laughs> existence as a magazine. But it's still maybe something more interesting that having um, money from the ministry and then it's like, I think you, you really have to think about what you are criticizing and maybe not making any critical gestures like against uh, um, some difficult topics like religion or... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, I, it's, it's, this conversation is, was really fascinating, very interesting for me because there are different responses, different answers to this situation. In Budapest, uh, you know, it's really harsh these days and, uh, and the workers of the scene, whether they are artists, whether they're curators, whether they are gallery, on, gallery owners or um, editors, magazine editors, writers, it's a constant kind of everyday uh, dilemma whether to cooperate with state-run institutions, whether to uh, apply for state money, for public money, public funding or not, how to survive, how to solve the situation. For example, the biggest um, association for young artists, FKS, Association for Young Artists, they, they refuse to apply any state, any state funding, any public money, and they're now on the edge of, 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 of living or dying, or exist, um, functioning or, or just dissolving. Um, of biennial, you, I think you, you all know that, uh, refused to, to use the uh, state-run institutional system and to collaborate or cooperate with them, not applying for any state funding. Um, of course, in a situation like this, you, you naturally find your allies on the, on the market. Mm -hmm. So this is what Art Portal is doing also. We, we applied for uh, the National Arts Council, which is not entirely, not 100% controlled by the government people, but, more, but there's more and more government control under that, the, the professional decision-making just questioned. So I don't know, we, we, try to, we try to tend towards a different um, direction. We, we hired two salespersons who, who um, approached um, companies, approached even institutions. So we try to survive somehow, and we have the luck that we have a, a private owner, a pretty wealthy person. It's very interesting to see how his position shifted towards th these, these recent years, because he tried not to get involved into the culture political situation, the culture political scene, try to keep a distance. And it was pretty comfortable. Art Portal applied for, for some funding from the National Arts Council and usually received the amount applied for. Not these days. We received only the less than the quarter of the of the money we applied for. It's almost nothing. Um, he he invested some money. He put some money into to Art Portal. I mean the owner, without any um, uh, hope of getting it back somehow. His position strengthened on the art in the art scene but weakened on the political side so it's 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 very very interesting to the whole process and, and at the same time it, it it raises moral questions again and again and again how it goes back to the content just last sentence i don't know i which we try to we try to be critical towards the um official institutional system my problem as an editor that there are certain institutions the people just ignore ignore those places they, nobody goes there nobody wants to write about them for example kunsthalle budapest mucharnov which was a huge institution for many 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 years now it's totally totally irrelevant it's controlled by the hungarian academy of art which is a government loyal kind of political monster and just nobody goes there i don't know anybody who who, who was there in the last three or four years just nobody uh, I don't know if, it's, if this is the right res response, right answer. Not ignore them, not to write about them, not to, not to talk to them. This is what we are doing, but I don't know if it's good or not. Um, and at the same time, uh, we also politically engage in the terms of we doing some research and investigative um, articles, sometimes also opinion. 
We try to keep this position, but it's not easy in, during these days. Um, but uh, just a second, I'm curious, why do you think it's not a good idea to, to not go there? I think it's the only good idea. <laughs> like, not go, I mean, I think there I should think, yeah, be... Yeah, that's the question. To be yeah, to, or to no, to not, or no, to, to ignore. boycott. I think to it ignore, makes boy, a perfect yeah, the boycott sense. Is, yeah, on, on the moral level, it's okay, but um, if you think about it from a different perspective, um, if we write uh, about the exhibitions of these places, their activities, their, their policy, it can... It can um, Be accepted, gain an acceptance like uh, in no, larger no, no, scale. No, no, what I want to say is that it can make a common platform um, in terms of the values, in terms of the uh, relevant questions between ourselves. So this kind of feedback I, I can be useful well, also at the same time. I think it's a waste of time, to be honest. Um, I mean, there's no point in discussing so much what is wrong there should I mean you get that I'm sure that at the beginning when it was shifting there were a lot of critical texts and then probably everyone said okay we're not just yeah we're just now not the situation go. is more harsh but if you sure. don't make yeah. any critical statement it can be read that but they uh, did. But how is, okay. is but and how is it with the make, how is it, how is it with institutions make. like the Ludwig Museum, which is not dedicated directly towards the government, you know, direction, but they are they are in a limbo on the on the arts uh, art field also. So it's not not the Kunsthalle situation, which is under total control, but not but not on the other side. How how is it these kind of half half institutions? What what how? I think black and white is never an answer, so th th there's always necessity to be, uh, um, yeah, to try to analyze and find your way somewhere in the middle now. Ludwig Museum uh, was occupied no. for, for almost No, at least, two weeks. so uh, what you're gonna do, you're gonna boycott Ludwig? But you have Ludwig, to make a decision. Uh, I think what is this, it's no black and white. Of course, there is black and white. You should make decisions. I think this is the point. I mean, this is why, this is again one of the, you know, a critical position should be you know, Fair this enough. or that. Yeah. Now uh, it goes back to me that you, you, you called the current government in, in Hungary in your recent article a uh, simple word, fascist. Yeah, well, they're fascist, but I, again, I mean, they're fascist, but um, also like they're capitalist with the fascist discourse, so it kind of complicates things. Um, again, I mean, okay, never mind. But the thing is, this is the kind of stuff that you have to make decision on. And I think, again, this is one of the functions that we could properly take. Like, you know, um, why, um, why try and compromise and with who? I mean, no, what's I, the... I don't speak about um, making compromise. I, I'm, I'm talking about writing about the situation, writing about mm -hmm. them, writing, I don't know, I mean... Everything is about making uh, uh, compromises, you know, we have a year of uh, avant-garde, uh, this whole year uh, in Poland, and it was the fact, uh, in fact, uh, about making some compromise between the uh, visual art scene and the uh, politicians. And the patron of this year of avant-garde was our uh, uh, president. Andrzej Duda, so he's not really interested in avant-garde, but he... Oh, uh, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. 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 No. <laughs> but of course, like, uh, I mean, there's a difference between this kind of cultural diplomacy, there's a, there's a different function. I mean, it's supposed to... Um, it's not, it, this is not where we're acting in. I mean, I think that this, uh, the, 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 the area in which we can be effective uh, in this position as... as uh, Somehow independent art magazines, of course, we have our ties and we have our, I mean, we're not in the desert. Uh, we, we are tied to many, many things, but the, uh, you know, the level on which we can act um, is, uh, is precisely, it's not like big cultural uh, decisions, but it's, uh, you know, on, on, on this, um, um, how shall we say, on this day-to-day -day somehow level. Um, on the the kind of um, uh, artistic practice that we are in touch with already, so I don't know. I, and I think this boycott of of uh, some institutions that are really uh, obviously terrible um, and somehow you know against at one point they go against human rights and all these things. So you have to you have to say okay no. <laughs> It's uh, otherwise it would be really bothering uh, if if uh, you know if we mm, took that. But couldn't you also say by ignoring it, then you're also 
pushing it out of the picture and out of the discourse. And do you really want to do that? Because shouldn't we be talking about the bad? I mean, shouldn't you be critical about what's happening? But um, I think that there's a lot of. But in, in, in Budapest, I think that I, or at least what I get from Budapest, what kind of text I, I read, uh, people are very critical. I mean, they're not, uh, they're not making reviews of shows in Mucharnok, but uh, there's a lot of intellectuals, or I mean, not a lot, but there are intellectuals who are making a point in resisting. Um, so they're not pushing things aside, but the, the, the scene taking a stance against this kind of institution is a powerful response. But isn't that part of the, what you're talking about, the critical discourse that should be going on in print, maybe? That you are taking this scene because, and also about specific content. I mean, I mean that sh shouldn't, if, if we do it in the, you know, here in the corridors, it's fine, but it shouldn't happen in print? I awesome. think it's, uh, well, it's, uh, at least that's how we know about what is going on in, in, in Budapest, uh, uh, in, I don't know, in Poland, uh, Shum or Dwutygodnik, another uh, uh, um, bilingual, I, I guess, medium was no, writing. Diary. They don't translate a lot. But yeah, they, they, they are, uh, uh, we, at least for uh, two years, we we're receiving a lot of articles talking about the these changes uh, uh, that uh, are happening for good, I don't know, seven or ten years with, with Fidesz. So seven years. Yeah, seven years. Yeah. So the, the, the whole thing, uh, uh, next seven will be better. I promise. Uh, the, uh, I think that the, like the information why the boycott happened and uh, who uh, is uh, kind of like uh, cut out from our perspective, which institutions should not be uh, uh, reflected, uh, it's there. It's just that uh, you don't involved in, in like criticism on a regular basis that you would write an article about show that happens there or you would be extremely critical I believe but this is not like we can still talking about this uh, how to deal uh, uh, with this criticism around the, those institutions what I find more interesting is actually to talk again about the uh, of biennial which is a very direct response to uh, uh, and also very uh, uh, we might say positive response that they, instead of being only critical, they, they also want to put themselves together and organize something which uh, will go beyond uh, uh, any uh, frontiers like uh, commercial, non commercial, uh, even public or state funded and uh, independent. Because as far as I know, there were some institutions that were also partly funded by the uh, by the state. I think in your uh, article it was mentioned that, uh, or it was not, yeah, it was clear the statement that we're not depending on the on the public money because it's a dirty money. Uh, but uh, yeah, but we're trying to uh, more like hack it or, or try to uh, develop like alternatives, not uh, being completely uh, boycotting, but not being completely um, again the black and white thing. But it's black and black actually. <laughs> it looks like really uh, I mean if uh, if you want uh, um, the question is you know what can we do we, um, because that that was their question as well okay we are in this really bad situation but we want to do something about it which is already a very responsible and brave uh, thing to thing to do and then um, I think that the, this is why, in a way, I don't know if you understood this side of my argument, which was that uh, um, because you were, you said something like you were against what the, my position, but uh, I think um, seeing uh, the off biennial, one of the, the ideas that were really, that um, I really started to think about more clearly is that uh, responses to specific contexts uh, can be collective and they can also be in this sense regional so I think uh, you know just to give an example I was talking to some of the curators involved in in off uh, who were also part of the of part of this East art mag so again they had many functions but uh, I was thinking okay so what could I do possibly for uh, for off and I was like okay maybe two year in two years time when there's a another biennial, I could apply for funding for a project in my country and then share it with you guys. 
So in a way, this, this way I would redirect money towards you. Um, and it wouldn't be money that you would have to apply for, you know, in, in bad institutions. <laughs> So just as a, you monkey know? business a little bit, no? Huh? It's a monkey business a little but bit. So. No, I mean, uh, and I think, you know, in the kind of off, getting the whole region to respond, like making us more responsible for, for what's going on. They're not seeing it as a private drama. Like, okay, the Hungarians are super weird and they chose these creepy people and... Um, because it's uh, it's symptomatic for what's going on. I mean, uh, okay, you have Poland, but you know, Romania is not very far from uh, populist uh, right wing under the guise of social democracy. So you know, uh, Czech it, it is uh, going. Uh, it's going it's funny to compare uh, how the, each uh, country or maybe art scene is responding uh, to not this, anymore, let's say, conservative yeah. or populist term. Because we know that in each country there are some problems. In Czech Republic, in Slovakia, is this uh, Nazi guy. Uh, so each country he's has out. a problem. And like a week ago, he's huh? yeah. he he he, lo he lost. But the probably no, no, it's only a re regional election, and still he's still in power somehow. Um, so um, as I compare poly, 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 po Polish and Hungarian, uh, let's say response, it's really different. But maybe we are too fresh to get some more brilliant, brilliant ideas. I think that now what is happening in Poland is a little bit stupid in some ways, like this shows that are only about Polishness uh, and it's funny that we still have this whole uh, infrastructure, it's not destroyed, and we have this public money, and they are public, so they are not dirty somehow, because public is for everybody, not... Oh, and Hungary, they also have the money, it's just public, yes, but uh, they are very dirty. So trusting. everything mm -hmm. looks quite normal, and uh, maybe our Minister of Culture is more inter interested in the theater, cinema, or television, because this is something more connected to the society than, in fact, art. Uh, so I think that there is a, even a kind of frustration in the, uh, our, uh, let's say, uh, art scene that we are not so interesting for our, our Minister of Culture. <laughs> he don't make any attacks on us. Uh, so we try to make these political exhibitions, um, try to behave like Yes, we have something to tell you in this uh, difficult times, but uh, it appears a bad show. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, we have this year of avant-garde. So. Uh, which, uh, which are based on criticism, how do you actually work with your contributors and so on, you know, to sort of emphasize the work and you were uh, talking a lot about professionalism in relation, of course, it always comes back to money, but it's also uh, professionalism is also a question of how you work, how you write, and you can decide if you allow curators to write about whatever uh, curators shows or, or, or how do you voice these, these kind of uh, political stance and so on. So I would like to ask you what are these strategies and how do you put them into practice through the medium that, that you are representing? Oh, it depends uh, really how, in what kind of uh, person you are working. There are some are, um, young uh, critics that are writing really good or good, and some that ha have to have uh, some, let's say, uh, their wor uh, I am collaborating with some authors that are still the same, oh, writing the same sheet things. So editing, uh, giving advices, look at this, you forgot about uh, this. It's like uh, in school, you are a bad author. I think this is what we, ha what we should do a little bit better. Um, this was the first year of the project, of course. It was kind of a learning year for us. Um, this is what we should do a little bit better, to this one-on-one -on -one working on the texts with the actual authors. Um, uh, to, towards the, their... Um, so and this uh, is also difficult in this project because sometimes I read some text from uh, residents, uh, our guests, 
and to know that okay, I, if I, she, he or she should change something. This is maybe mis misunderstand, uh, etc. But it's already translated into English. And to edit this text is almost impossible because uh, uh, we receive this text, for example, in Czech. Oh, we have a lot of uh, problem with translation Czech, uh, Czech text. I think that I was uh, even thinking maybe there is a kind of uh, way uh, or school of Czech writing, like of really metaphorical, uh, metaphorical uh, with a lot of uh, inside jokes that you can get. <laughs> even the title, translated the title, is like, what, what is it? This sounds like this is a question, this is, this is, this is a real problem. Problem. If, if, if I come here and write, write something about the local scene or a specific exhibition or an artistic practice, etc., uh, instinctively, instinctively I talk to my audience back in, back in Budapest. Uh, but but um, based on the principles of East Art Max, the, the content has to be relevant in, in different uh, other uh, scenes also. The local scene, the home scene, and on the international level also because it, it's translated um, to English and sometimes now to German also. So it's not easy to find the right language, uh, the right topics, first of all, the, the way how you write about the things. So um, I don't know if we were good or not at this um, whole issue, but we are working on it and that, that's going to be the big challenge in the future, how to, how to produce relevant content for for a for a wider kind of European um, scene, I think that I mean for, for it's very complicated. But I think that we kind of over the time we came to the conclusion that it's not really possible to write for like. But are ten we are we so interesting one. toward each other? Is it like so nice to uh, uh, read an article? Uh, very critical uh, article about your beloved it's, it's from question. some Polish critic who came here and said like this is crap, this is horrible, this is so post-communist, and I could not uh, get into the museum, Bucharest, <laughs> wake up. It's, so is it it's funny, but the articles that, yeah, these are the articles that have, that are really widely read. What is less read is quite funny, but uh, when uh, our authors traveled to other countries and brought back stuff from there, that was much less read than what was written about Bucharest. So what people are interested in is finding out what others think of uh -huh. them, uh, but they're not curious enough to read um, what but is But they might uh, get back to it once they will be traveling to Prague and then you, they Maybe. want to you know, get to know better the, the scene. But how but about this like specific question, because there was a, a West mentioned in this conversation at least twice, and of course we're all sort of like interested in being, a, I, I guess so, in being a part of uh, West or uh, central uh, uh, art world of uh, we uh, apply to like we would like to have a certain standards that are developed back there uh, we believe that it's like more democratic more sexy and it's uh, this is the way it should be and uh, somehow anymore. i was wondering like how does it work like between countries here this relationship between uh, um, provincial and provincial if we're really so much keen into uh, gaining more knowledge about each other if uh, there is so much interest going on between those countries. But you shouldn't, I think uh, calling ourselves provincial is somehow self-colonialism. I wouldn't go for it. Uh, when I was saying pro that we were provincial, I was not, um, not referring to um, somehow some sort of comparison to when I said that the Romanian scene is provincial. It wasn't in the sense that it's not as good as the Western scene, whatever that means. And now, you know, the West is super problematic as well. Um, it's more like, a, an, it's precisely this attitude of, of self-colonialism. I think this is what is kind of uh, bringing us uh, down. And the purpose of, of exchange is exactly that, to kind of go beyond these, these mm -hmm. questions, like, come on, get over, the, the comparison with the, with the West, it's so boring. And besides, now the West is like the last thing you want to be compared with. 
you know, it's much more of interesting course. to get a comparison, I don't, as I said, to Indonesia, you know, that is a really No one wants to have an exhibition really in, in Tate, everyone uh, wants to have uh, an exhibition mm -hmm. in Samati Art House yeah, in Georgia. Yeah, now they do, exactly. So uh, that's I, I really mean, much more ask, interesting. Let's ask artists how they, uh, they approach it. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's serious, I mean, in, in the sense of, if, if you mentioned just of Biennial and the situation of Biennial and how they respond that is just very familiar to the situations in the Far East and some, some other, some, like Indonesia, in like some Arab countries where there's no question about uh, state funding and things. So um, meanwhile, a couple of years ago when the first of biennial, the first edition took place, uh, a lot of people from the West, they said, why don't you, why don't you uh, reclaim the, the public funding? Why, why, do, why, don't you take, why don't you take part in this reclaiming kind of process? So it was a, it was a question whether to, to um, which sides to, 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 um, to stand on. And now our situation is obviously closer to the, to the Indonesian situation, mm -hmm. yeah, but sure. But it's also, um, maybe it's... At the same time, yeah, I just, just wanted to go back for one sentence to, to your question, recent question about uh, how the local scenes respond for, uh, for these articles. For example, the Off Biennial article by Christina was, was, I think, very useful, very useful for the scene, and they responded really well, they liked it, and they, they started to think about s certain arguments that you had. Meanwhile, the, the argument about the solidarity and about the re regionality, extending the, the Off as a, as a paradigm, as a problem, as, a, as, a, as an ex experiment um, into the region, it was also um, recept uh, recepted well. So yeah, I think as for, as for the Budapest scene, as the pressure is higher and higher, the people want more feedback and they are, they are open to do these kind of mm -hmm. conversations and stuff. Um, probably five or 10 years ago, it was different. Now everybody really looking for, for partnership, for, for, mm -hmm. for conversations, for, for debates and for you know, arguments, so um, yeah. Yeah, that, let's put uh, our trust in that. I, I think it's, um, it's a pretty good statement. Yeah, I mean, I think that from doing. our perspective, it didn't really happen like that we would uh, get so strongly critical or strongly somehow focused texts from, from the guests that uh, would uh, claim such oh, strong yeah, positions. Criticized yeah, but that was kind of this ongoing criticism. I think Ai Weiwei criticized Ai Weiwei, you know. Everyone, like, who you didn't know? criticize so Ai Weiwei? Was, so it was nothing like <laughs> surprising, you know. It was not surprising in this text that someone else would, would come and would uh, claim some, some strong, mm, I don't know, you know, uh, criticism towards the scene or something. Um, so, and I think that there was this, also, of course, we had this problem with writing for like, you have to somehow choose what context you write for. And for example, with Kuba, it was, um, it was a bit difficult because like, uh, he really tried hard to, to write, to make the text relevant for both. Um, but still, you could see that uh, he's more thinking about his home readers, his, his readers, uh, the readers of Shum and yeah. the people uh, that will want to know what is happening in Prague and what's interesting in Prague right at the moment. And I'm not saying it's, it's wrong. I mean, for example, we, we had um, differently focused texts than from Kata Benedek from Hungary, who um, wrote one text about um, the public art or pub, uh, art in public space in Hungary, which brought not and a strong position. Darian, yes, it, it didn't bring a strong position against or in, in favor of our environment, but who brought some information from outside and that was useful for us as well. And um, then she, even like for me, she kind of discovered this queer archive in Prague um, where it was uh, quite an interesting show and um, she brought her very specific interests in very specific topics that she has had in her PhD and everything. Mm -hmm. So it kind of was a good match, you know, that she just picked a topic that is here not that reflected. And that was a good um, kind of good fit that it also. Yeah, that was one of the good exam examples. So it doesn't have to be only that that uh, someone will come and will say you do wrong. I think every situation wrong, you know, is, or something. It can be different. 
It really depends um, uh, on author, what, what is his, uh, let's say, way of writing, interests. Um, so one can go to another country, write what is happening there, and it, it will be interesting. But another will come to the same country, and it will be boring text. So. Yeah, that's. Um, yeah, I mean, we did it because um, they are all translated also in English because we thought we will try it. I mean, it was also like um, because we didn't before you have this experience of working with foreign writers and writing about your art scene and the other uh, and their home art scenes, you don't really know what will happen. Uh, but uh, actually that was an also, also an idea and I, st I think it is still an idea that maybe you will get back to later or something, that you have a specific platform such as political critique for the political stuff, that you could have uh, a website in English for, uh, for what is happening in, in the art scenes of the involved countries. But we don't know, I mean for now it's the project website to maybe, yes, uh, step out of our own magazines and of our own art or um, social environments. But um, I, I can't say that uh, it makes sense to publish all those texts in English. I wouldn't really say so. But um, that's also, I but maybe. I have a different opinion because I think that there is a lack of information what is happening in Czech Republic. Uh, maybe Romania has the, this English side, so it's like helping, but also in Poland. So uh, we are thinking that we know what is running, uh, how it looks in the different countries, but mm. we don't. I know. Uh, I, I just and even no. your magazine, my magazine, they are not, they are not in English. And uh, I cannot read Czech. I can only have a taste that maybe there is something that I no, I don't understand Czech. Uh, so, um, so there is no connection. And this is also this project about about making connection. And mm. uh, unfortunately, we have only this English, like um, the most uh, uh, popular uh, language. Should that we is, all study Hungarian? Uh, <laughs> I'm for that. I, like. I mean, I agree with you. Actually, the one language is I, totally different from all the others. I think it's it's it is important to have this um, uh, to have to have this maybe platform also in English for for others and for each other. Uh, it's just that we all still focus on our own publications, which is I think obvious. Um, and then maybe if you do a platform like that, maybe you would need another like editorial leadership. Yeah. Okay. for the English so content. It's, uh, yeah. still problem with the money that if you want to make it, make it really good, you have to focus on it. And the funding is not so big and there is no money for the editors, for example, for the daily work. So we are like uh, working for free or maybe having this benefit to go somewhere. I just really like the idea to build really something like the Indonesia thing, like build the central middle, middle European identity of our arts and scene. I mean, but of course, it's, it's a lot of money, a lot of work uh, from some people, so that's why I asked because I checked this website and it's it's hiding inside of. <laughs> yeah, that was a question for us whether we should whether we should maintain a dedicated website for this whole project. We don't have that much content, so this is why we we, cho we chose um, to to put to, to collect these articles under a label, to to have a domain, but it leads to a department of the art portal. But probably next year, if we can go on with the project and it evolves, we can have a website dedicated. Because also to one of the ideas next year was to get um, other magazines involved like uh, from other, other countries. countries and other magazines. Still, we would like to extend it because uh, we, th we have some discussions about what. It. Uh, your article from your portals. Uh, uh, if it's relevant, mm -hmm. we. Uh, Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Also. But I guess what's interesting now is also this kind of expansion. I mean, uh, the what I uh, what I have applied for, and I will find out quite soon if it if it worked, is uh, uh, to get uh, you know uh, people from um, Russia, Bulgaria, uh, Serbia 
to take part in this, uh, to actually invite them to Romania to write about the scene because, as I said, the most interesting part was uh, people writing about us. But um, also, in all of these countries, there is one magazine that is doing all the job. In the one in, in Serbia, quite funnily, it's, uh, it's completely in, um, voluntary. So they don't have this question, where, or how, how do we pay for it? Well, you know, we just, we don't. And it's, it's really bad. It's really bad, but the people were, I mean... The value uh, of this which, which one is that? Supervisual, not that one. But it's... Um, um, of course, that's a problem that was one of the issues with the off, you know, whether, okay, if we work for free, people are going to start to think it's possible. Uh, but then I'm thinking, okay, if the guys hadn't have done this platform, um, you know, I mean, by making it for free, now there's some opportunities. So there is something uh, to that, I guess. We don't, we don't always have to think in terms of, you know, <coughs> the funding, even though... For sure, it's important. But Maybe I was just thinking, sorry, just last uh, sentence, like, uh, I was just thinking on some uh, net, uh, network like transit, as you mentioned, mm. which is sponsored by bank, um, like bank, and they do not really uh, give them like a strict rule of what to do, just to support them, in, like, in, and in opposite, they make them some sort of yeah. 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 Well, I don't know if any bank will be interested in uh, funding uh, criticism. No, it's like... <laughs> I mean, it translates a lot of criticism. Yeah, 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 for sure. But I think what's, uh, what's also a good thing about this network is that you don't necessarily need so much, ex so many extra funds to do at least something that at least this like knowing each other and knowing, for example, telling each other, hey, we have published this and this could be interesting for you as well, um, is somehow enough or I mean, it can do, do more, of course, but this is something you can always do that um, Carolina will tell me, hey, we published this article and you could maybe translate it because maybe it could be interesting for you and we do it and then and like that you can get some good quality content uh, thanks to this network and thanks to this sort of extended editorial board, I would say. So, um, so we can uh, help each other. That's a no. great, that's like a great summary. This is the best summary <laughs> one could ever make. Uh, thank you very much for uh, being a part of uh, our little gathering. Uh, thank you for coming and uh, uh, there is still plenty of food, so please feel free to join our very, very late uh, branch. Um, and uh, thank, yeah. you so thank you. Thank you.